everyone, Presito here. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about runes, which I'm sure some of you have heard of already, especially if you are involved in the BRC20 or SRC20 space and so on. So it looks like it's going to be uh, quite popular and it's really becoming quite hyped and it could be a really big competitor to BRC20. So I'm going to be going through what exactly is runes and i'm also going to be covering one of the first projects launching on runes later in this video which i think is really worth looking into it's still very early for them and i think it can do very well since it's going to be the first legit project on runes or at least one of the first so let's get started with what is runes and rune protocol exactly so it's going to be a new fungible token protocol on bitcoin and it will launch around the end of april at block 840,000. So back in September 2023, Casey Rodomer, which is the creator of Ordinals, actually talked about runes for the first time publicly. And uh, Asia's leading venture capital firm, Sora Ventures, actually partnered with Taipei Blockchain Week, where he actually spoke about them there. He spoke about runes protocol at Taipei Blockchain Week and it started picking up quite a bit of hype since then. So let's have a look at comparisons between runes and BLC20 and how it's going to improve it and just uh, be much better in general so first off is runes will have a lot fewer transactions where brc20 requires two transactions just to deploy two to mint and three to claim runes will just have one transaction for all operations and also brc20 lacks a reference implementation index or wallet where runes will have all of these so in terms of brc20 it has limited protocol extensibility and runes can be upgraded via a soft fork then also BRC20 relies on ordinal theory for transfers, which complicates implementations where runes is self-contained and does not depend on ordinals or inscriptions. So writing alternative implementations would be easy on runes. BRC20 is also limited to four letter names where runes can be up to 28 characters long. And also BRC20s can include arbitrary code, whereas runes may only include letters from A to Z, which makes it harder to spoof. Then BRC20 token balances may be locked by an attacker sending a BRC20 transfer inscription to a victim's address, where this can't happen with runes, so it's a lot more secure in that regard. Also, runes are UTXO based, so they're based in the UTXO set, which is unlike BRC20, but similar to SRC20. And also the supply is linked to a particular UTXO, enabling that UTXO to represent varying quantities of runes, whether it's in the billions, millions, or fewer. And rune token balances are monitored through UTXOs. So that's a basic summary of runes, how they work and how they compare to BRC20 and so on. Also some more information, you can see there's a 100K offer here for the first people to build a rune indexer, issuance or transfer app up and running and so on. Also Binance spoke about runes, which is bullish and OKX did as well. So you can see the hype is there and it's definitely really early, obviously it hasn't even launched, but it's important to be up to date with how it works for when it does launch so you know how to get involved. So now I'm going to be talking about the first project one of the first projects launching on rune protocol so as you can see it's runes terminal which as the name suggests is going to be a launch pad obviously if you're comparing it to ape terminal it's going to be the first ever runes protocol launch pad built specifically for the dawn of bitcoin's new era and it's not just going to be a launch pad it's going to have some more features which we'll be looking into so let's get into it because this looks really really hyped so in terms of the features they are building, you can see they're going to be building a runes explorer and indexer, which is going to be a basic runes protocol infrastructure public for everyone at any time. So obviously as per the suite where they have a hundred K incentive for people building this, you can see why they're building it to make sense. Also, they're going to have a runes token issuer where you can create and issue your own runes token directly on runesterminal.io without the need of any coding skills. And also of course, runes pad, which is the first launchpad on and for runes and as part of the infrastructure launchpad gathering liquidity on evm chains and deploying it into the bitcoin ecosystem so obviously launchpads are very hyped and it's going to be the first one on runes just like the first one on src 20 super hype first one on blc 20 super hype and so on so let's talk a bit about their token and how it's going to be used it's going to be the Rooney token and it's going to give you early access to vetted idos liquidity mining initiatives tier-based allocations obviously that means that depending how many tokens you hold you'll get a tier 
and get allocation based on that. Yeah, obviously, the more tokens you hold, the higher the allocation. And then you're also going to get insider access to veterans in the BTC space. I assume that would mean if you hold a certain amount of tokens, you can join certain chat rooms or something with uh, top people in the space. And also community-driven funding through governance. So the usual governance that most projects have. So let's talk about the tokenomics. Always important to check that out. We can see here the total supply is going to be 21 million rune, like the same total supply as Bitcoin. Funding goal, uh, roughly uh, 3.5 million, you can see here. Initial market cap is going to be around 37 Bitcoin. And you can see here the different rounds that they have. OG sale, round one, round two, and public round. And keep in mind, these rounds, that's not the amount they're raising for those rounds, but it's the valuation of the project at those rounds, which is quite a low valuation for what they're building. And obviously, they're only raising 82 Bitcoin, and uh, that's at these valuations, which makes sense. So if we have a look at the clips and testing for all the rounds, obviously everything's standard for team development, marketing, and so on. But if we have a look at the sales, we can see an OG sale. They have a two-month cliff with 10% on TG, two-month cliff after that, and then 12-month vesting. Round one is 20% on TGE, and then six-month vesting. Round two KOL is 20% on TGE with five-month vesting, and then public sale will be just 100% unlocked. So you can see getting into that public sale would be ideal, and definitely recommend you guys to give them a follow. Stay up to date. Also, give me a follow. I'll be posting about that. Then here you can see more information on their team, which is obviously very good that they are docs, and so all projects on BTC are not docs. So that's really good. And lastly, here is their Twitter if you want to give them a follow, like I recommend you should. To stay up to date with what they are planning and what they're launching in terms of their public sale, you can see how to participate and so on. I definitely think it's worthwhile, especially for new technologies like this. It's always good to get into the first mover in the space, and this is the first mover in many regards for Launchpad, Indexer, and other infrastructures. So I definitely recommend you guys stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.